Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Learning. So this episode is gonna be the continuation from previous episode where I failed to make the monad. Apparently, um, it is possible to do this um, monad thing um, for our setup here with a circle inside a circle. Currently, I am having it as a hexagonal and it looks something like this and I can actually control the number of hexagon it's uh, being generated and then I can also randomize it and I can also s kind of switch the state whether I'm using the rainbow color or something that's more random so there's a lot of possibilities here um, and the monad thing actually looks much simpler what I did was um, I did wrong in the previous live noding where I put the viewer B mesh and vertex color inside the monad. If I actually put it outside, it's kind of working. The funny thing is, um, even with this currently with this setup, um, I don't need to use the vectorize and split, and it seems to be working. Interestingly, uh. Don't know why, but I'll continue from the previous live noting. So, where was I? Circle in circle 002. I think this one. So, this is before I jump into the monad thing and I made a mistake. Sometimes it's a good thing to make a mistake. And especially if when you're recording it and then you find out, okay, you're not supposed to do that and it's being recorded. And, and then only good if you are kind of look at it and then kind of trying to fix it and then redo it well so anyway this is the setup that we have uh, previously so we have control over the top and the bottom and then we can control the number of vertices we can leave it as hexagon for now and then we have this control over how many hexagon we want to have in between the top and bottom and everything else um, just the seed for example that we can randomize if we use the bottom part okay that's the hue I think but we can change the state well anyway we have that thing and we want to put this guy outside um, so I'm gonna cut this we don't need this guy so group alpha merge uh, whatever just delete it it's gonna be outside and then this is gonna be our color output and what else we're gonna have the viewer we can actually use the viewer here viewer draw and kind of check it out what we have at the moment so we have this guy okay fine we can hide it um, what I'll do I'll select all these nodes and then tap spacebar and then monad turn it into a monad hopefully this time it works create a monad from selected object enter so you can see this guy is piping to the out to the output the vertex and data so that's good and this guy okay this is for the number of subdivisions and we can actually rename this count or division okay and we have the output and this is for the color let's name it properly color okay Cool. Um, okay, we are done with that. Now we, we can jump up and we have our monad. Still, okay, now still kind of working. We can control the division, so that's a good sign. Um, the color, uh, let's name this like a circle in circle. You can actually search the monad now from here, circle in circle. See the monad group is here. 
So, okay, we can do that, cool. But we're not gonna use viewer draw, we're gonna use our PMesh viewer. And make sure this selecting our material. And the output goes into color, vertex color neo. And the color coming from this guy. Hopefully everything works as expected. Uh huh. Okay. There's a problem. Okay, we need to use face instead of vertices. Loop. Loop is actually quite interesting. You can get like a some kind of like watercolor look, but you probably need to do a repeat inside it. That's for some other time. So, okay, we get the color working. Now, what if we want to have like a multiple um, of this grid? Let's try using plane. 2x2, two two. okay, we have 4, and then use the matrix. Plug this guy in. Okay, we have 4 of them, good. It's working, seems to be working. Let's look at the outliner, make sure we don't generate like thousands of objects accidentally. Okay, beta 1, 2, 3, okay, seems to be good. Alpha, probably don't need alpha anymore, just delete it. And can we factorize it? Okay, um, that's a good question. We might need to go, go back inside the monad and then make some changes. So let's see. What other control do we want? Uh, we can let the user control the radius stop and the bottom if you want. Vertices also something that you might the user to control. Okay, vertices. The seed. Okay, we have two kind of seed actually the one for this guy and the one for the other one. So I might actually um I'll rename it properly before I forgot. Because uh, attribute with the same name with the monad tend to cause like a clashing, and I don't want that. So we have one seed coming out, and we have another one from this guy. This is a seed B. Okay. Uh, let's get out of the monad let's check it out so we have this vertices that get reset um, let's make it 6 seed A, seed B, okay seed B is controlling the rainbow so let's see if we, this works right away if we use a range integer and then kind of test it out Start step, stop four, okay, count four. Plug this into the seed. Seems to seems to be working. Although I'm not quite sure whether vectorize and split is needed. It seems to be working right away. Uh, yes, some kind of vectorization happening already. Maybe not perfectly, I don't know. But seems to be okay, so we can leave it as it is then. Cool, it's actually already working. Um, if you want, you can have more divisions, more or less, and then you can also control the number of vertices and it's become circle or keep it like this. Um, we actually want to control the switch as well, the switch between the, the hue and the random color. So that's, uh, this is the switch, the state plug into the monad. Um, now we should go up and check it out, maybe plug this into that guy and 
um, switch. Let's where's the switch? Okay, that's the switch. Zero and one, and this should go to the seed. Yeah, somehow it's a uh, the randomization is kind of working immediately without without we have to do the vectorizing and splitting. So that's interesting. The color seems to split itself. Um, what else can we do here? Of course, you can have as many as you want, but the number of uh, variations of the color needs to match the total of the vertices here. So list length of the vertices. Let's check it out. Um, 16, okay, 16, then plug 16 into the count. So now we have that design. Cool. And we can switch the state, whether you want it to, to have like a random color, a uh, rainbow based on the hue or something that's more random. Cool. And then you can do a lot of modification yourself like um, if you want to give a control of the radius top and radius bottom you can do that and the height also it's totally up to you now, see you, you can have this all of a sudden you have like a different design this is really really powerful I think so back to the top and you can you can control the top and the bottom And of course, you're not limited to this kind of grid pattern, of course, any kind of pattern will work. Uh, instead of plain, you, you might want to use uh, the brick grid. Um, let's try this. This should give you like a hexagonal pattern, more or less. And you look at it from the top, we can push this guy. Oh, actually, instead of doing that, maybe just scale, scale the bottom radius to match the this design. I think a better way to do it is to use a vector math over here and just kind of scale it. Multiply, multiply scalar. Okay, that's that should work as well. View top view and control the radius. Let's move this slightly. So until it creates some kind of uh, hexagonal kind of pattern so that looks nice it's probably not not 100% perfect there that there will be like one point where this is like exactly making a perfect like a honeycomb kind of pattern so I'll leave you to that but basically that's pretty much it for this um, let's see if I, s I can set up to get a loop. That's interesting for the C's face. It's, it's only working for face at the moment. Each of the polygon only have one face. That's why this is so easy to create. If it it has if it has multiple polygon face, you need to adjust the setup slightly. Okay, so for the C's, you can make it circle, and you have this design division how many division you want but I like kind of like the hexagon pattern and we can get rid of the ambient occlusion so it's cleaner look at it from the top you can make all kind of adjustment if you go inside the monad for example and then instead of instead of using the hue all the time maybe you just wanna use the the value something like that so you have black and white kind of pattern 
that's also possible. Mix the hue and the pattern with a slide of saturation. So you have this design. And yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, so this fixed the, the monad issue in the previous live noting. Um, there's endless variations you can make with this. Um, just feel free to experiment. Um, I kind of like it with a saturation. Yeah, I think that's looking fine. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, suggestions, just let me know down below. Um, thanks again for tuning in, and I'll